you purchased one of these RevShelf kits and it's time to install it, we're gonna show you how today. The tools you're gonna to need to complete this project are going to be a drill with a 3 30 seconds uh, inch bit, tape of any type, you're going to need uh, some screwdrivers, both a Phillips and a flathead. You're going to need a pencil for your template. And you're going to need a measuring tape. We're doing a uh, parent's corner edition of this where I'm going to have my helper Ender here uh, helping out with this project during the, the whole thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed that piece of it. Let's go ahead and get started and see what all is in this kit. DIY with Chris, giving you the tools to do it yourself. Today on DIY with Chris. We purchased this from Home Depot. It had pretty good reviews and this does have the slow close option. So we have the instructions that are right here. On the Home Depot website it also has an instructional video as well. You can check that one out. We have the template here that we can use to mark off all the points. That's why we're going to need the pencil. And then we have the kit contents here. So we'll go ahead and pull all those out. So we have one rail side hardware components. These brackets are gonna be for the face to attach the door to the kit. We have the rail for the other side. This is the bottom section. The sliding rails and the crossbar there. So that's everything that comes in the kit. We'll go ahead and start assembly. The first step is going to be in to install these uh, side rails to these sliders. So we'll take the sliders out of the package. We're going to use the four machine screws that are provided for this step. As we're doing these installs, uh, if we go ahead and set this up in the same orientation that we're gonna put the bottom rack on, then we're gonna wanna have these tabs facing the inside. It doesn't matter at this point in time, it's just gonna make it a little bit easier for later. As we are applying these, you're gonna look at the back edge here and there's the tab that's over top. We're going to slide this under and lock it into place. On the front edge, we're gonna see a hole and then there will be another small hole in the slider. So we'll do the same thing for both. Again, line up the tab in the back, make sure that it slides underneath, and then we can tighten these down. Line up your two holes there so you can see them both, and then start tightening your screw in until it's secure. Next thing we're going to do is install the bottom here. So we're going to have this front uh, swooping pan towards the front of these, which would go towards the uh, front of the cabinet. These brackets are where the door is going to mount. Once we have our holes lined up, then we're going to use the four machine screws to tighten it down. Next, install this crossbar. So we're gonna need the end pieces here that also come in the bags. So we're gonna install one on one end and another on the other. And we're gonna install it towards the rear and on this top bar. So just snap it down there. Next thing, we need to measure the center of this open face. So I'll need the tape measure. And then we'll have to mark it with a pencil.
Mine is 21 inches, so that's going to be 10 and a half on our center mark. Next, we're going to take the provided template, and you'll need to make sure that you're using the right one. So, so the single or the double. We have the double bin steel bottom. So we're going to use that mark that we used earlier, line it up with the center line of this, bring it all the way to the front face. So the front of this template should be the back of your door, being that our door closes on the front of the face, it's going to be in line with the front of this. If you have an, in, an inset door, then you're going to need to move it back whatever the width of your door is or wherever it's going to end. So we're going to make it flush with the front of this, and then I'm going to need the tape, and we're going to secure it in place. Make sure that it's even all the way across, and flush, and secure down your template. I'll probably do it in a few places here. Once you have it in place, make sure that your template is sitting nice and flat. And then we're going to mark these black dots on the map, or on the template. So there's going to be eight spots here, and that's going to be our drilling locations for our mounting hardware. With our spots marked, we're going to remove our template, make sure that we can see exactly where we marked, and then we're going to uh, drill our pilot holes for our screws. We don't need to go all the way through, just a little ways. And you're going to do this to all eight. It's nice and handy to have a drill that actually has a light to make it more illuminated while we're doing that portion. So after we have all eight of the holes drilled, the pilot holes drilled, we're going to move our piece into the cabinet and then line up our holes and I see that Everything is lined up real nice. Now we are going to secure it down with our eight screws. Yeah. I need the next one. Got it right here. And the last one. We're now going to attach the door brackets with four screws, so it'll be the screw in the washer to the outsides. You're going to screw it in just a little ways. With it loose, we're going to take the bracket. Slide it on over top of the screws and down into place and then continue tightening.
and the other bracket. And then tighten it down. Next, we're going to need our measuring tape and pencil again. We're going to do a few different measurements and put them in our booklet here. There's a few spots that you can see. The first two measurements are going to be from the bottom of the lip here up to your two slots. So get those two measurements. Our next one is going to be the full opening of the cabinet and then write that down. And our last one is going to be the full height of our door. Once you have written all of those down in your booklet, it's going to have you go, uh, it's going to have you calculate the height difference. Ours is two inches and then divide that in and divide that difference by two. So that's going to be one inch. Moving over to the next step, it says if your door is larger than the cabinet opening, add the dividend. For us, it's one inch. Add the dividend difference you found in step two to the measurement in step one. So we're going to add a one to my eight and a half and to my three and a half inch marks. That is going to mark the screw locations on the door and then we can pre-drill being careful not to drill all the way through. We initially installed our brackets facing inwards and that is okay. We could have actually done it that way. Something that is very important to note is on your door, if, it, if the center has the thin panel, then you're going to need these brackets to line up with the thick portion of your door. Our whole door is the same thickness. So I can have my brackets facing either way. I'm going to prefer, or I changed them facing outwards just because I want them to be a little bit wider apart, providing more stability on my wide door as we hook it up. But we could face them on the inside. Once you turn your brackets the way they need to be, if they still aren't lining up with the thick portion of your door, you can use these spacers on your screws. So you just put them uh, in between the bracket and then the housing here or the chassis. So you put them in there and then you would, and if you're putting in the spacers, if you're putting in the spacers, then you'd have to use the longer bolts provided. I don't have to do that. So I still have the short bolts and then they're connecting the bracket. And again, I can do either orientation. I leaned up my door against the cabinet face there and I reached in uh, with the pencil and I marked the edges and it was much further up because it was still sitting on the ground here And then I lined those up. I did my measurements as it sh as uh, It was in the booklet. So I have Four and a half is my bottom measurements here and nine and a half is my top measurements So I'm taking the outside of the brackets where I had measured and then I'm just sliding them down to where the marks that I made the four and a half and the nine and a half are right here in these slots and now I'm going to and now I'm going to drill the holes and secure the bracket onto the door face and then I'll be able to slide it back onto the frame and reattach the last two screws both the video and the instructions don't talk about how to center it from side to side very well just from top to bottom so we already put those marks there so we already put the marks on the door and then we drilled in first this top sliding hole. Once we had mounted them in those top two horizontal brackets, then we mounted it back on the frame and pushed the door close, ensuring that our sides lined up with the drawer above it. So it's just slightly off, but I, I think I'm okay with that on both sides. So it's pretty dang close there. Once we did that, then I opened it back up and in the video it shows to secure the second screw right here in this one as opposed to the bottom bracket which is where we made the original mark on this cabinet door. I like this one a lot better because it's going to keep it in place where we have the other one in the top sliding bracket. So I'm going to keep this one here and we did that on both sides. 
it is still in line with the overall marks that we did up a little bit higher. I've already erased those ones. But that secured it that secured it side to side and gave us uh, the best measurements that we could have without any instructions or cheats from the actual company. Now that it is, everything is adjusted and tightened into place, we can go ahead and move our trash bins and put them in there. This is a slow close or has a slow close function so I can push it as hard as I want and it'll slow it down just before it closes. Once we have the door mounted here, you can see this top slot has a little bit of wiggle room from left to right. That's gonna make it so that your door is going to stay flush with the cabinet. So you can loosen these top screws, not the bottom ones, just the top ones back up just a little bit and then you can shift your cabinet doors so they can camp forward or backwards to line up with your cabinetry. After you have them in place and everything looks good, tighten it back up and you're done with that step with mounting your doors. The lids for these trash cans are sold separately, so if you do want to get those, you're going to have to find them elsewhere on a different website or on Home Depot like we purchased them. Uh, after I got my receipt back when I purchased them online, because I could only find this online and not in store, it had a little ad for the uh, for the lids for these trash cans. So if you have any other questions, please let me know. Uh, if you found this helpful, please subscribe to our channel. And if you have experience with these, have had any problems with them, quick fixes, or anything else that you would like to input here, like centering them from side to side and have a better experience with that or better technique than what I use, please go ahead and drop those in the comments for everybody else. The whole purpose of these videos is to make it easier for everybody else so they can install them and make sure they're not buying something that they wouldn't really want to. It's not good quality. I do overall like this set right here and I would recommend it to other people at this time. Other than that, I hope you found this very helpful and have a great day DIY team. DIY with Chris, giving you the tools to do it yourself. Today on DIY with Chris.